quick, I wanted to talk about the uh, recent massive discussion about race and IQ, uh, which is truly remarkable that we are still having this conversation in 2017. Uh, and we are also going to be talking, of course, about The Bell Curve, um, which is a book that was written with by two people. Uh, one was a psychologist and the other a political scientist. Um, and they basically had put in statistics and then laid out some policy um, proposals. Now, the main thing they said, I think, was that uh, the government should stop subsidizing um, low IQ birds or something like that, which is truly remarkable. I'm paraphrasing, um, but truly remarkable. The idea that we shouldn't help those people who need it regardless of IQ is pretty stupid. Plus, directly being poor doesn't mean you would have a low IQ. Um, of course, it's most likely that um, the majority within probably would but it, it's irrelevant to the point um, because it's all about uh, culture and it's all about you know opportunity and um, basically what you do not based uh, not predisposed your IQ which IQ in general is a very you know there's still debate about whether that's a legitimate way of determining one's intelligence and is it really is it not how do you determine it um, I definitely don't think so. I think that intelligence is very decisive. And I think that you can be intelligent in certain areas and be very stupid in certain areas. And there's different ways. Intelligence is not just a linear way of going about figuring it out, period. That's not it. Um, but anyways, so basically there is basically there's this whole, you know, thing going on. And also race realism. So Rage After Storm had made a video um, basically, it was pretty remarkable. I had seen most of it, if not all of it, I think. And basically, it was an attempt to say that, uh, you know, African Americans can't grasp abstract concepts and all this other type of shit. And just kind of like this, um, um, trying to give herself, uh, credit and things like that. It's truly remarkable. Um, but I think that it was completely stupid and I've seen a lot of videos from otherwise respectable people who seem to give this race and IQ thing, um, you know, any inch of credibility, nightmare fuel for, for example, I think that anybody who thinks that, um, IQ is, first of all, that IQ is, uh, the complete and uh, end-all be-all measure of intelligence, number one, or even thinks that it's an, a truly, like, legitimately accurate way of determining it, um, and also believes that um, IQ or intelligence is somehow genetic or due to the color of your skin is a complete moron and a complete idiot, and it's so obvious, because anybody knows that if everybody got the same education and the same opportunities, uh, you would not see, you would not see um, lower average IQs, or at least to the, to the amount that we have right now. It's all about how well you can work. It's about the content of the character, not about the skin color. Um, but I wanted to mention Noam Chomsky's criticism of this because Tons of people have criticized it. I just wanted to read it to you guys. So it says, In 1972, Noam Chomsky questioned Hernstein's idea that society was developing towards a meritocracy. Chomsky criticized the assumptions that people only seek occupations based on material gain. He argued that Hernstein would not want to become a baker or lumberjack, even if he could earn more money that way. He also criticized the assumption uh, that such a society would be fair with pay based on value of contributions. He argued that because there are already unjust great inequalities, people will often be paid not for valuable contributions to society, but to preserve such inequalities. Um, in 1995, Chomsky directly criticized the book and its assumptions on IQ. He takes issues 
uh, with the idea that IQ is 60% heritable, saying the statement is meaningless since heritability doesn't have to be genetic. He gives the example of woman wearing earrings. He said, quote, to borrow an example from Ned Block, some years ago when only women wore earrings, the heritability of having an earring was high because uh, differences in whether a person had an earring was due to chromosomal difference XX versus XY. No one has yet suggested that wearing earrings or ties is, quote, in our genes, an inescapable fate that environment cannot influence, dooming the liberal notion. Uh, he goes on to say there's almost no evidence of a genetic link and greater evidence that environmental issues are what determine IQ differences. And this is something that I completely agree with Chomsky on. Uh, I definitely think that uh, there seems to be no evidence that there's a genetic link because obviously you can point to uh, discrepancies, of course, within the average daily lives and cultures and uh, socioeconomic statuses is the main key. You'll see that um, poor people all along the spectrum because of their uh, lack of um, you know quality education or access to quality education and you know um, their basically their situation you know you have uh, a household that is in shambles it's going to be much tougher for you to work hard and study and to be to gain more knowledge um, and that is what it's more about so it's more about getting the um, equity of opportunity and that's what it really should be about not saying that you know IQ your IQ you know certain people are more intelligent uh, because of the color of their skin or is genetic that's total bullshit What's up guys, it's Saul Hill here. You guys are watching the Progressive Voice. Make sure you guys click subscribe down below. We're fighting Donald Trump tooth and nail and we need your help.